We have breaking news, a key race alert. Uh, Lincoln Chafee, uh, the one-time Republican U.S. Senator, and then independent governor of Rhode Island, has just announced he is running for the 2016 Democratic presidential nomination. Uh, he's at George Mason University in Arlington, Virginia. I want to listen in. ...bundling of events into which we put our brave fighting men and women. In fact, we had a precious moment in time where a lasting peace was within our grasp. Too many senators forgot too quickly about the tragedy of Vietnam. The second reason that I learned, the second reason that I voted against the Iraq War Resolution was that I learned in the first nine months of the Bush-Cheney administration prior to September 11th not to trust them. As a candidate, Governor Bush had said many things that were for the campaign only. Governing would be a lot different. For example, a campaign staple was, I'm a uniter, not a divider. He said very clearly that his foreign policy would be humble, not arrogant. And he promised to regulate carbon dioxide, a climate change pollutant. These promises were all broken in early days of his administration. And sadly, the lies never stopped. This was an administration not to be trusted. My third reason for voting against the war was based on a similar revulsion to mendacity. Many of the cheerleaders for the Iraq war and the Bush administration had been writing about regime change in Iraq and American unilateralism for years. They wrote about it in the 1992 Defense Planning Guide in the 1996 report to Prime Minister Netanyahu, in the 1997 Project for a New American Century, and in the 1998 letter to President Clinton. A little over a month before the vote on the war, back in 2002, I read an article in The Guardian by Brian Whitaker. Listen to this, quote, in a televised speech last week, President Hosni Mubarak of Egypt predicted devastating consequences for the Middle East if Iraq is attacked. We fear a state of disorder and chaos may prevail in the region, he said. Mr. Mubarak is an old-fashioned kind of Arab leader. In the brave new post-September 11th world, he doesn't quite get it. What on earth did he expect the Pentagon hawks to do when they heard his words of warning? Throw up the hands in dismay? Gee, thanks, Hosni. We never thought of that. Better call the whole thing off right away. They are probably still splitting their sides with laughter in the Pentagon. But Mr. Mubarak and the Hawks do agree on one thing. War with Iraq could spell disaster for several regimes in the Middle East.